China's economy is starting to show real signs of recovery. And so is this good news for our Alibaba and Tencent or other Chinese investments? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So guys, as you smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, in Alibaba's recent conference call, they did say that economic activity has started to pick up in the second half of this current quarter that we're in. And so what we are really looking for was evidence of, you know, corroboration for that claim. And now we're starting to see that. And so let's dive right into this article that was posted by The Wall Street Journal. So you can see here that, you know, there has been a sharper than expected expansion of activity, which, you know, offers, of course, the politicians to do politics taking which is shining the spotlight away from the pandemic missteps but really for us it's a uh, welcomed level of good news because you know this is what Alibaba was saying was happening and now we're actually starting to see it in the data and what do I mean by the data well let's dive into this a little bit more so the first area that I would like to look at of course is the PMI and so that's really you know factory activity and so you know there was an article that came out yesterday which said that Chinese factory activity has stunned with the fastest growth in a decade and so what do they mean? Well, for those of you who've been with me for a while, you guys know that I like to look at the manufacturing PMI data. Anytime the data is above 50, it suggests that the economy is expanding. And so you can see in February, it surged. So that's that growth rate that they're talking about. And you know that like last year, mid year in 2022, we just came down and we just never got back above that 50 line. And so I'm really happy to see this. However, is this a temporary blip, which uh, just takes into account the uh, pent up demand? And will it come back down to um, a lower level? We don't know, but you can see that the PMI increased to 51.6 in February from the 49.2 in January. And so that's really good. Just one important point from this is that employment actually climbed. So this is really positive, guys, for the first time in 11 months, while backlogs of work increased at the quickest rate in just 16 months. Meanwhile, buying levels also rose for the first time in four months and the fastest pace since June of 2021. Delivery times have also improved. Remember, guys, this is a look Look through for Alibaba's next quarter results. Remember that the reason why Alibaba's um, China commerce business was impacted was because people would just cancel orders because they just weren't able to get the product delivered in time. So if this is saying that delivery times have improved to the greatest extent in eight years, this is a read through to Alibaba's results. So, you know, um, I would not be surprised if I see those shares surge closer to uh, them reporting uh, for the next quarter. And so uh, this is a bigger deal than you think it is. And so just continue watching for um, commentary on delivery times in the country. And then finally, you know, just consumer sentiment as has improved to a 23 month high amid expectations of a sustained recovery in consumer demand. I mean, this night might not be consumer sentiment. This is producer sentiment, FYI. And so, yeah, you know, higher consumer demand will make producers much more positive towards the economy. And so right now it looks like things are going in the right direction and they are in line. And so they corroborate what Alibaba said on their recent conference call. So this is really good news for us. And so the Wall Street Journal article goes on to say that the official gauges of activity in both manufacturing and services have improved sharply with both sectors rebounding into expansion territory. And so once again, guys, you know, the, the, just beware. I, I wouldn't get too excited because remember that Alibaba said that, you know, it's only half of their Q4 where we'll see uh, a bit of a surge. But of course, you have to report for the whole quarter. So I think in their next quarterly reports, you still are going to see a bit of a stall because you have the weakness half of the quarter and then the strength in the other half of the corner and so i think the real results will be in q1 however i do think that the shares will recover well before the q1 results i think just the guidance if the guidance is as good as what we hope for at least um in, in other words you know if if uh, alibaba can suggest that china commerce is back to growing at at least like five six or seven percent then you're gonna have a real surge in the stock price and so for alibaba and, and you know that may not necessarily happen this is not investment advice but that's kind of the way I'm thinking. Now, the other thing is notice that online booking for overseas trips have searched and domestic tourism has also jumped. So this is really good. I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to see the country get back on track. But you know, guys, I'm not going to end this video by making it completely positive. I like to bring up the potential risks. And so let's take a look at some of the risks that could impact the recovery this year. So the Wall Street Journal actually did a good job on covering the risks. I, I enjoy the newspaper when it's balanced in its approach. And so 
world. You know, too many times we have newspapers that push just one perspective. I like when a newspaper will be sort of like holistic in their approach. And so looking ahead, economists say that although China's COVID-19 appears to be waning, there are risks on multiple fronts. So the first risk that they mention is, you know, there is a potential for a multiple um, COVID wave risk. I think this is lower on the uh, totem pole just because uh, they got all hit by um, the Omicron variant. And so, you know, unless a variant mutates to be much more um, deadly, I think we're fine, but I, I don't see any evidence of that just yet. The next risk is the one that I continuously mention on this channel, which is, you know, what happens if the global economy enters a recession? We're not seeing indication of that yet. And so, you know, but there is the potential that they continue to raise in, uh, interest rates to uh, combat inflation, which there seems to be some inkling in that direction. And so if demand in the West um, comes down, you could see a global economy risk. Right? Remember, guys, Alibaba is the manufacturing um, hub for the world. But if the world is not consuming, then of course, you don't need the manufacturing factories or whatever. And so, you know, that's another risk. Um, and I think this is more likely to play out than the multiple waivers. So this is something that we have to pay attention to. The third one is, you know, there is a domestic economy risk. So, you know, they still have a fragile labor market, especially among young workers. There's a lot of unemployment and the continuing property slump could deter many uh, from spending more freely. And so, yes, we have to uh, look out and see um, how the domestic economy recovers post COVID. Right now, things are looking good. Let's hope they stay in this direction, but you know, anything can happen. And so let's keep an eye on this. And then finally, just the volatility alone in the financial markets could cause the share price to remain suppressed despite the uh, global economy and the domestic economy doing well. And so, you know, none of these risks could materialize, but the stock could still stay low because the stock market is worried. And so just be aware of that. Um, but once again, I don't really care about this risk so much. So long as the domestic economy is doing well and the global economy is doing OK, uh, I'm fine. I don't, I don't really care which way the stock price goes. In fact, I'd rather have the share price remain lower for longer because at the end of the day, that just allows Alibaba to continue to churn out cash and buy back those shares on the cheap. And so, you know, perfect world scenario is that Alibaba stock uh, stays under $100 per share for like the next 10 years while the economy continues to do well and Alibaba continues to do well and they're just buying back tons of share on the cheap while we're also given the opportunity to buy up more and more shares while simultaneously maintaining diversification in our portfolios. But of course, I know that not everybody wants that and I don't wish that upon you if you know, you're know you sitting on an L and you just want the share price to come back up. But that's just not how I invest. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you the Alibaba model because I have adjusted some revenue expectations. But before I do that, I just want to remind you guys that you can get access to all of my research models at that lower tier of the Patreon. And so it's a really good way for you guys to see sort of like how to model some of these companies and how I think about these different businesses. So it's very interesting to help you learn. And so jumping into the Alibaba model, you can see that I still expect fiscal year 2023 to go backwards. And then I expect growth to resume slowly beginning in fiscal year 2024. I don't expect, you know, the double digit revenue growth days anymore. However, you know, um, I do expect uh, China Commerce to resume growth at around seven and a half percent. This is a little bit higher than where people forecast the economy to grow at. So I'm being a little bit, in my opinion, optimistic here. I'm being a little bit pessimistic on cloud, which I'm only forecasting it to grow at 10 percent. So, you know, this might net out. But the other thing that I want to point out is I just think that in fiscal year 2023, China commerce will go backwards, but I think negative 5% might be too pessimistic. I think the better move here is just to put a zero and then you probably just get a zero on the total revenue growth. But I want you guys to let me know what you think. Where is fiscal year 2023 going to end? We got one more quarter left. Now, I recently bought shares in Hewlett Packard. I really like the company. In fact, I like the company so much that I also bought the shares for my little baby's um, education fund as well. And so if you guys want to take a look at that video and sort of like how I think about the business, you can actually get to that video right here.